Um, so, and the other thing as part of this, and I'll talk about this also talking about the other, uh, when my, we talk about the uh, other starter kit is um, the pipeline, the content pipeline. One thing that is that we're focusing on right now, you know, so uh, Harry did this new content pipeline uh, front end um, because the content pipeline has always been kind of controversial. So I'll zoom this in a little bit because it's a little easier. But so this new builder thing, you have a, a content project like you did back in the day, you know, it's just, but it's a regular C sharp program. It's not a content project like then. It's a program. So uh, with the program, you know, it has a builder CS, which is the main entry point. It creates a builder, calls run on the command line arguments, and returns an error on failure. And the builder itself defines your content. So instead of having like a separate CS proj that you add things to, you basically come in here. So it's like hey, include everything in the content. So this is kind of like the SDK style projects in .NET, except it's not a .NET project, it's code. So because of that, you can execute whatever you want. Um, so we're saying, hey, include all the FBXs in the project, use it, give it, use the FBX importer and use our normal mapping processor, which is our custom processor and scale everything down. You know, then here's another one. Uh, we also have a couple of X files because they come from the original a sent demo, so you know, include those and do the same thing, and then include everything in the power ups folder. You know, even though this is here, this lets us specialize, right? So it's saying power ups FBX use this normal map processor with this scale, so it uses a different scale between these, and load all the FBX for the for levels, and that you know, turn on mesh collisions and change its scale. So you can see kind of like how you define how it works. You know, we have an exclude here saying, hey, just ignore these HLSL files. They're not real shaders. Exclude those. You know, exclude that 3ds Max file. Don't try to make a model out of it or process it. Uh, it's just in there for content. And then like I have some uh, some code here to like exclude some texture stuff that doesn't need to be including right now. But this is pretty much your content project now. Uh, which is neat, you know, so this is all new structure, you know, and then here you can see we have an assets folder that just has like, it just includes all the assets in here just to visually be able to see what your, what's actually your assets you're building. So these are the assets it's, it's going to build. This is the script. What is that? Probably worth pointing out there, Tom, just for, to, for clarification is that mm -hmm. you're only adding in exceptions. You know, the default is everything imports that's in that folder with the default processors and default importers for those content. Right. And the things we've got in here are just exceptions. So these are things we have special cases to handle. Right. For everything else, you don't have to worry about, about it. It just automatically gets pulled in. Right. It works the same way as C-sharp SDK projects, where by default, everything is included. In, in our case, by default, nothing is included. You actually have to do an include star to include everything. I'm pretty sure that's the case. Um, and then we're overriding this. Like, these are all specializations saying, OK, Include everything, but when you include all the FBXs, you use this processor with this. And when you include Xs, you do this. And when you include these FBXs, do that. You know, so you're kind of specializing as it goes down, you know, this list of things, and it just applies one after the other and it ends up with the final rules. So that's all really cool. Another cool product thing, like in the process of testing this, and this is why we're doing this, is to dog food this and understand how it works and learn how best to use it. You know, uh, in the process of doing this, you know, we learned a couple of interesting things that, you know, we didn't expect. Like, because of this, how this is, we were like, well, we used to have like a separate, a, you know, a separate project for the for the custom content processors. Well, we don't need that anymore. If this is a real C Sharp project, we can just include the con our custom content processors directly in this project. So our custom content processor is in the project directly. It is not a separate Project. So you just end up like in a normal game, you would just have your game uh, project and your content project, and that's it. You don't need a here's my uh, content processors uh, project unnecessary. You can just go into the content project, which is really nice. The other neat thing about that is, uh, and let me stop debugging here and this again. But uh, the other neat thing about that that I learned the other day is if I just put this in here, this debugger launch at the beginning, then I can basically debug the content processor. So here's my custom content processor. I can basically debug it. I don't think I actually, it might not actually run because I everything is built at the moment. I don't want to rebuild everything because it's a little bit slow because of you know the size of some of our content. So when you run it, so I hit F5 to run the game, but in the process of running the game, it says, okay, rebuild content, which executes that content 
exe. But then it runs our code and says, oh, you want to launch a debugger? Pick where you want to launch it. Well, I'm just going to launch it in this, this window here. So it's going to start debugging it here. And now I'm debugging the content project, which is really nice. So I can step through all this code and see exactly how it's building content, which was like when I got it to do that, I was like, wow, that's really cool. It didn't do anything more here because and right after it launched that, then it ran the regular debugger to keep going. So I could debug my content building. And after it got done debugging the content building, it launched the game because I had started with F5. So that's a really neat unification of all this, which I think is shows how good this actually works. Uh, so I'm really happy with those results that we're getting this all to unify together and work like this. Um, so yeah, and, and we're still working out bugs here. That's one of the things that's been a little bit of a slowdown on the other starter kits is you know, we're, we really want to launch starter kits strong. We don't want to launch them using the old, old MGFX file stuff. Or not, not MGFX, but MG, MGCB files and the old pipeline. We're really pushing for the new starter kits to use the new pipeline so that people have a very smooth experience. And um, in the process, we're learning these problems that we have here and fixing things, you know. So on a regular basis, just today, we came across two other things that we're working on here to improve this. Uh, to make it work. So uh, let me jump over to the starter kit platformer. And this is the same thing. So yeah. this is the, the just three platformer one other thing starter that, kit. Yeah, just clarify one other thing there, Tom, because it's a question that keeps mm -hmm. coming up. So when people have got their own custom content process or they've got ones in NuGet packages or they've got like monogame extension packages, this content project is just a regular .NET solution. So you can either right. reference the, the file project where the thing is, you can have a NuGet. So long as this console app can see the code that the process is using, it will just work. And right. we're not perceiving any changes to an existing content uh, extensions to work this. It's just the only thing that changes is how you consume it. Right, exactly. So you can add it. You could technically have a NuGet that has a custom content processor and just add it to this to this content project. This is the same in the 3D, the, the 3D platformer starter kit. You just add uh, another you know, uh, another new get into here and it'll immediately be consumed here and it will work. So I think that stuff is really, really nice uh, having it this way. So this is the same sort of thing. Here we're using a regex rule instead of a wildcard rule. Harry really likes regexes. I hate regexes, but, you know, he really likes regexes. So there's regex in there for people that really want to use that, which gives you a lot more power in how you filter things. So it's definitely worth having. You know, so include everything, then use a wildcard rule because I wrote that and I prefer wildcards. I did start out FBX to say, hey, use our custom processor, you know, exclude this one FBX which we're not using it, you know, uh, copy these JSON files into it, you know, include these AUG files with an AUG importer and the sound processor, sound effect processor, um, you know, and then here we want to custom scale this character. So include this processor with a custom scale. So, and this all works the same way. I can enable the debugger if I want and launch it, and it all works basically the same. So, this is proving to be very, uh, you know, very useful to work this way. I'll just run it because I'm here. There's really not, and you saw, I guess we can talk about that a little bit. Let's see if, uh, actually, this one's small, so I can maybe rebuild it real quick. If I go sort of rebuild everything at the moment because I don't have it hooked up, and we're kind of working out and th these starter kits are going to basically be an example this is how you do it at some point we will have a template project that gives you this framework to start with but for right now these starter kits are what we're using to uh as an example but if i come in here and go so if i go to this top project and just delete my content you know it'll rerun this guy and uh i think i can i'll let the debugger run because that will make it easier to see and I'll set a breakpoint, uh, I guess, here, so that it, you know, it gets there when it when it finishes. Uh, so I'll run that, run the debugger. Uh, that's interesting. Why did oh, it was paying attention? I think it heard my F five. Wait, why did it do that? Oh, I know why. Because <laughs> I hit the wrong window. I selected this one. I should have selected that one. Um, so I'm going to hit a five. It's going to build the content. Uh, if I go to my build window here, you can see all the build output. What it built. In this case, it was already built. So did its thing. And we're kind of refining this output to get something a little nicer. Um, 
but yeah, so you can see all everything that built here and you know, it's hit F5 and it'll just continue with the, the demo itself. Yeah, uh, so demo... out, there, out there, Tom, what? as well, is that one of the big things we're focusing on is making sure the caching works so that content only builds when it change or when it, it or a process of value changes. Right. But also building the content is completely optional. You know, you can completely decouple it and just build content on the left, have it shipped to the, the actual game project on the right, and you don't have the same problems you have today where if you if there's a problem with the GCB or this problem with the content building, it stops you from running the game. Right. Like decoding yeah. it so that it's separate. Right. It's it is separate. You know, if you go in here like with this project, we don't have I'm kind of pushing against not having a giant targets file that does everything because I don't find it very useful and it's it's something that uh is more complicated than it needs to be. So here's all the glue that makes it work. It's just this chunk here. You know, it says, hey, uh, target build content, you know, uh, target desktop GL, you know, here's the the folders to build everything into. Here's my command line of what I want to build. And then MS build this content project called build and run. Here's the arguments. And it just basically runs this other content project and executes the work. So this is the entire glue between the game code and the content project. But you could um, you could decide, I don't want to do that. I'm going to omit this completely and not do that. You could also do other things, uh, which is not hap you know, We'll talk about that here in a little bit, but we have some other plans for this as well. So this is uh, the entire glue for this is there. Um, so it's very straightforward. I'm really happy with how this is turning out. We're just working out all the little details so that we have something that is extremely simple to work with and is very flexible. Uh, in the game itself, I don't know if we uh, we talked about it last time, but you know, um, you know, there's some been some stuff that Dean had done, some new menus. You know, uh, this guy is all the same, and I immediately missed my first jump. That's embarrassing. Uh, it's because the controls are backwards, so I expect. So this guy's all working great. It's got a little animation there, a little interstellar, you know, or in between uh, screen stuff. So yeah, this stuff's working pretty great. We're happy with our results here. Oh no! So yeah, we had we're, we were... the, the, the the plans for the content server. Right. So uh, um, yeah, we still have plans for that. I think that our the reason that we haven't, we want to ship the 3D platformer and get it out to to everybody publicly. You know, it's been as a, you know, a patron exclusive for three months now, I think. We wanted to get it out this time, but uh, what's slowing us down is we're still working out some issues with the new content builder, and we want to have that perfect before we do this. So our plan is to wait till the content builder is, is working well enough to make this work. Um, but part of that is... We wanted to have this new content server concept. Again, this works the same way, except instead of it running and build everything offline and starting the game, it would start up and it would launch it from the game and ask the content server on demand to build stuff for it as it's running. So you can have runtime building of content. Uh, for right now, we're going to put that on hold and get this first version out without that content server feature. I mean, it's in there. And it sort of works if you want to deal with it, but we're not going to uh, make it or finish it and polish it until after this initial build that just does what it used to do. It builds content. It just builds it a lot nicer and cleaner and is easier to operate with. Um, but we are going to do the content service stuff. I mean, and there's kind of two parts to that. And Simon and I were going to talk about it a little bit is... You know, there is the concept of, yes, you run the game and it build co builds content on demand as you're walking around. You know, um, there's also just the concept of when the game starts, it can just build all your content, um, which is a, a separate thing, but it can also work that way so that the game launches and builds your content. And that's really more of a, um, it's more, I guess, for, and this is the case we want to work out, is a method so that if you wanted to ship a PC game, and you just you hate the content pipeline. You don't want to build content at runtime or at build time. You want to build content dynamically. Or let's say you have a game that's very moddable. 
you want the content to build automatically and to optimize formats for gameplay, but does it on the fly. We want to set it up so it's very easy to include the content pipeline into your game and have it ship with it and it just work. It's not something we would recommend for like mobile platforms or you know consoles, but it would be definitely something to be done on PC platforms. So we're looking at the, at that as another uh, you know avenue to uh, to shipping this thing. So we're looking at different ways to uh, to use the content pipeline uh, to give everybody a lot of flexibility with it. So yeah, that's basically where I'm at. I hate this level because it takes forever to wait for this thing, and I always can't tell how. I'm too late. No, oh, no.